Good morning, folks. We've got solar activity for the first time in a while, so we'll start there. First, we not only notice the southern coronal hole turning across, but towards the end of the sequence, the northern opening is visible at the left side. While sunspots still remain absent, we are continuing to see the ramp up of magnetic active areas. The two brighter spots on the left incoming are a sign that the next sunspot cycle is ramping up. The solar wind ramped up overnight as Earth encountered an intensified plasma stream from the leading portion of the southern coronal holes. It is minor thus far, and so the KP index reflects the minor nature of the stream. But up top on the north, the actual solar activity. Plasma filament whips up into the corona with half of it settling and descending while the tip ripped away into space. As the filament motion would suggest, it's not coming at Earth but whipped out sideways, and you can really see how these electromagnetic explosions take on helical, vortex shapes as they spin out into space. Let's go to Lebanon, where the capital city of Beirut is underwater after a tremendous week of inundation and tremendously few pathways out for the water. Up next, it's a graphic from the Weather Channel, weather.com, putting the alleged one degree of global warming in its place. 30 and even 40 degrees below average is possible this week as the jet stream dip in the central states is going to balloon over the next 48 hours, driving incredible amounts of Arctic air southward through Canada and into the U.S. Today's news is heavily Earth-focused, and we'll start that out with the 2020 Earth Observing Fleet. They do update these just before each new year for both the Earth and heliophysics observing satellites. One of those satellites is a polar orbiter taking stock of not just the ice, but the underside and deep underneath. Ground penetrating remote sensing revealing the structure down to the mantle, and if I may, the underside mountains of rock jutting down into the liquid quite obviously being vastly more impressive than those upon the surface. It is also a good moment to remember that half of Antarctica is still gaining ice. The half that is losing it slightly faster the last few years has five active volcanoes going off submarine style beneath the ice, melting it from below. Now get ready for an eyegasm. Folks, if you thought the new GOES satellites had a lot of camera wavelengths to choose from, just look at the chemistry it's revealing in the atmosphere. As the panels fly by, you'll see a little white list of compound names populate from the left side. They've got ozone, hydrocarbons, halogens, isoprene oxidation products, nitrous and hydrous compounds. I have sped this video up eight times. At the link below, slow down, you will be astounded at some of the different details the variety of views are showing. Got a little transition out into space before bringing it back home to close. It's XMM Newton's 20-year anniversary. Its ultraviolet and X-ray detectors have been a critical complement to Chandra and Hubble and has pushed into new ground with some of its own discoveries about galaxies, active galactic nuclei, quasars, etc. Tons of images and info at the Newton links today. Up next is a strong response paper to one that came out last week, which I did read, but saw no reason to share until this one. The retort was made to a claim last week that all evidence is still pointing to accelerating expansion of the cosmos. If you want to see how their data fudging and assumptions overruled reality and logic and exactly why the universe is likely not expanding at acceleration, link is below. And the same goes for our top story. Plants under stress, lack of water, too much heat, can they cry for help? Well, we know there are chemical changes from the color to the smell to the saps and other chemicals meant to attract birds to eat bugs munching on them. But today we get a new one, an ultrasonic scream. This is not a joke. When stressed, there's literally an ultrasonic scream from the plants that is detectable in clusters and greenhouses. And it scales with the severity of the stress. Folks, Plants are talking to us, to the animals, to the sky, and to the earth. Please resist the temptation to toss this one in the bin with fairy tales and magic forests. This one is as legit as human brainwaves affecting molecules outside of our body system, which we know is real. This is too, and the implications therefrom are vast. We greatly appreciate your support. While I am banned on Twitter five more days, please feel free to post the earthquake alert maps from our app, We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.